The 20th century, of course, was a period of even greater change than the two centuries that preceded it. The story of the 20th century is very largely shaped by the two world wars and by unprecedented technological developments that were seen throughout the century. If you think about what an average home would have looked like in 1900, those things that we took for granted in the year 2000, the television, the radio, electronic devices, were simply not to be seen in 1900. At the beginning of the 20th century, Methodism was a divided church of something like a million members. By the end of the 20th century, it was a much smaller, though a reunited denomination, with less than a third of a million members. The movement towards Methodist Union began at about the turn of the century. Some of the smaller Methodist denominations came together in 1907, but the negotiations were very much interrupted by the Great War and Methodist Union was finally achieved in 1932. 1932, therefore, is the date of the establishment of the Methodist Church in Britain. The Deed of Union, which brought the Methodist Church in Britain into being in 1932, remains our foundation document the changes between 1932 and the year 2000 were considerable. Britain, of course, underwent considerable social change in that period, and the Methodist Church responded with developments in its own self-understanding. There were liturgical changes. The Methodist Church came into being with its a number of hymn books in 1932, 1933 saw a new hymn book. There was another new hymn book 50 years later, reflecting the changes in language and also in understanding of the world. In 1974, after very much discussion, Methodism ordained women to what is now the Presbyterate. Youth work was of considerable importance to the Methodist Church, certainly in the middle of the 20th century. Between 1950 and 1990, there was a huge amount of work with children and young people in Methodist churches. The Methodist Association of Youth Clubs had a considerable national presence. You couldn't be in London in MOYC weekend in the 70s and 80s and not know about it. Now, of course, we have a different way through 3Generate of engaging with our young people. In the early 20th century, there was considerable emphasis on preaching and mission, particularly in those central halls that were established in the last years of the 19th century and in the early years of the 20th century. Throughout the 20th century, many of those missions had also a considerable social work presence, offering shelter to those without it, food to those who had none engaging with the poorest of the poor on the streets of our cities. In the latter part of the 20th century, that inner city presence changed its character. Many of the great central halls had dwindling congregations and closed in favour of smaller premises. The 19th century, having seen the establishment of Methodism very much as a global church, the 20th century saw a change in the relationship with the World Church. The pattern of sending missionaries to serve in other places gave way to an understanding of partnership between different Methodist churches in different parts of the world. Now all the places that were previously overseas districts of the Methodist Church are autonomous conferences governing their own affairs sometimes with different understandings of orders of ministry from those in Britain. The World Methodist Council brings together the various parts of the World Methodist family to share in its understanding of our common legacy. The union of the Methodist Church in Britain in 1932 
was one part of a much broader movement towards union in the Christian churches throughout the 20th century. The early 20th century saw the establishment of the annual October Prayer for Christian Unity. And throughout the century there were hopes that the divided parts of the Church Catholic might be brought together. Particularly from a Methodist perspective, there were plans for Anglican Methodist Union that began shortly after the Second World War. Methodism remained throughout the century a key player in all the ecumenical developments, leading the way in the establishment of the churches together in Britain and Ireland and churches together in England.